Hey all, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. Today, I spent some time researching an artilleryman in Parker's Battery of Virginia. It's a great story. There's a great book, a great history of the battery written by one of its members. His name is Royal Fig. And in this book, he includes a description of Decoration Day in 1885 in two cities, New York City and Richmond. He paints in vivid tones what it was like to celebrate Decoration Day in those two places in 1885. I want to read these passages to you because they're particularly well done and they really give you a sense of what was going on at the time. But before I go there, I want to give you a sense of what was going on in the United States in 1885. Reconstruction was over for nine years. African American rights established by constitutional amendments are quickly eroding. Union and Confederate veterans are now in their 40s, and they represent powerful groups in their states and sections. The hard feelings about the late war continue to persist. This idea of reunification looks good on paper, but not so good in the hearts and minds of the population. So that's the backdrop. Now, I want to get to the passages by Royal Fig. So let's start with New York City. Here we go. Quote, 20 years, that seems a long time. The fifth of a century, that seems longer still. 20 years since the curtain fell upon the bloody drama in which two million men strove for mastery on the American continent. It is Decoration Day in America's great metropolis. Stand with me on Broadway where the Grand Street is faced by Union Square with its flowers and trees and springing fountain. Here, Washington and Lincoln are equally honored, the one as the founder of the infant republic, the other as the savior of a great nation. Flowers bedeck the equestrian statue of one, and flowers almost hide the form of him who said, with charity for all and with malice toward none, we will maintain the right as we understand the right. The great city is in holiday attire this beautiful 30th day of May, sacred to the patriot dead of the Union. That matchless spire of Grace Church points to a cloudless sky, and the gentle winds are caressing the flags that float from a hundred staves. Though it is yet early in the day, soldiers in red and soldiers in gray are seen going hither and thither, and the air is full of the busy hum of preparation. As the sun climbs the heavens towards noon, the grand street is lined by throngs of expectant people, and the doors and windows of all the houses are filled with eager men, women, and children. The national colors are waving from 10,000 hands, and the roar of a hundred drums announces that the procession is coming. How grandly they march! How brightly gleam the thousands of bayonets! How proudly yonder color bearer holds aloft the national banner, while the soft May breeze toys with its glittering folds, and the sunlight blazes in glory from each silken star. See that grand-looking officer with his mounted staff. His horse steps proudly to the music, as if conscious of the noble burden he bears. Who is he? asked my friend Robert Cannon, for the rebel boy of 20 years ago is looking with delighted eyes upon all this pomp and circumstance of military show. That's Hancock, is the reply of a polite New Yorker. Instantly, Robert Cannon's hands are clapping and applause, and thousands join him, while other thousands wave tiny flags and handkerchiefs in honor of the hero of Gettysburg. Let us now repair to Greenwood Cemetery, that Eden of the dead. Let us pass under the sculptured story of the resurrection that arches its entrance and ascend the hill which is crowned by battle monuments. Standing there, 
the eye takes in at a glance the two great cities whose denizens came here at last to find their long home. The waters of New York Bay are flashing in the sunlight with the dim outline of the Staten Hills and the Jersey Shore rimming the picture. So I'll pause there for a moment. That's Royal Fig's description of New York City and Brooklyn's Greenwood Cemetery on Decoration Day in 1885. The pomp, the circumstance, the crowds, the city, the waving flags, the excitement, the enthusiasm. He really captures it all. Now, let's go to Richmond. Royal Fig's description of a much more somber and quiet event. So here we go. Quote, it is Memorial Day in Richmond. In the afternoon, a regiment of infantry marches to Hollywood Cemetery, where a simple pile of rough granite marks the ground where thousands of Confederates are buried. Thither have already repaired women and children carrying flowers, and each grave receives its tribute of these emblems of affection. Following the infantry, few of whom have ever seen service in war, comes a veteran association of Union soldiers, commanded by a man whose empty sleeve tells his story. Next come the Confederate veterans, many of whom bear marks of hard-fought fields. The little procession halts near a newly made grave under the shadow of the granite monument. A Union veteran steps forward and places on the grave an elaborate floral decoration. Hundreds of smaller tributes are then showered upon it, and Federal and Confederate vie with each other in honoring the memory of Pickett, the Southern hero of Gettysburg. Prayer is offered, words of tender eulogy are spoken, and then, lighted by the rays of the setting sun, the visitors slowly depart such as our American War of the Roses, thank God. Not Greenwood, with all its wealth of art and help of nature, can surpass, if it equals, this Richmond city of the dead. Surely here, if anywhere on earth, is rest, rest for the weary soul. Let us walk along this quiet road in the subdued light of the evening. The roar of the river tumbling over a thousand huge rocks, breaks against the hill where Monroe is entombed and falls in soothing requiem in this lowly vale where we are walking. Yonder brook flows softly as if fearing to disturb the holy silence and the trees on its banks cast a tender gloom over the sleepers at their feet. On yonder hillside, a thousand evergreens and flowers are clinging in mournful sympathy to shafts that rise white in the thickening shadows. So there you have it. Description of Decoration Day 1885 by Royal Fig. Two commemorations, one in New York City, one in Richmond. Till next time, we'll see you.